write down the energy conversion that takes place in this cell. It is an electrolytic cell. So we have electrical energy to chemical energy, electrical energy to chemical energy. We can also see that by the presence of a power source, we have electrical energy being supplied to the cell and that electrical energy is then converted to chemical energy. 9.1, let's take a look at 9.2. At which electrode A or B will pure copper be deposited? 9.2. Right, so pure copper, it will get deposited at the negative electrode, meaning that the answer to 9.2 should be B. Let me show you why it will get deposited at the negative electrode. Take a look at this. We have CuCO4, which will break down to form copper 2 plus plus SO4 2 minus. This is a positive ion. This is a negative ion. The positive ion will get attracted to the negative electrode, which is B. And that's where a reduction is going to take place. So that is why I'm saying that the pure copper will be deposited at B because it is negative. And copper 2 plus will be attracted to the negative electrode as positive and negative attracts. 9.2. Let's take a look at 9.3. Right on the half reaction that takes place at the anode. At the anode, we have oxidation of copper, right? So we're going to have copper turning to copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons at the anode. This is at uh, the electrode A. At the electrode A, we're going to have copper becoming copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons. There we go. Let's take a look at 9.4. How will the gradient of the graph be affected as the reaction is allowed to proceed until completion? Right only increase, decrease, or remain the same. So let's take a look at what's happening here in more detail. The diagram below represents the purification of copper ore to pure copper. The cells also or the cell also contains zinc, silver, and platinum impurities. Right. The graph shows the initial relationship between the mass of copper deposited versus the time. So, back to our equation. How would the gradient of the graph be affected as the reaction is allowed to proceed until completion? Well, the gradient of the graph is not going to change. The gradient of the graph is not going to change. As oxidation occurs, reduction occurs. So, we are never going to reach a point where uh, the mass of copper deposited well, the time, the rate at which the mass of copper deposited goes down. We're never going to reach such a point or a rate where it increases. The gradient will remain the same throughout until completion. Right. 9.5. Refer to the relative strength of reducing agents to explain why zinc will not be deposited at the cathode. Why zinc will not be deposited at the cathode. Why zinc is not going to be deposited at B. So let's take a look at uh, what is happening here. The question says that we have some impurities, which happens to be zinc, silver, and platinum. But in our equation, we are only interested, so let me just say 9.5. We are only interested on zinc and copper. Why is zinc not being deposited at the cathode? Why is it copper that is being deposited at the cathode? So it means that we have as our ions in the solution we have zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus one of these two is to be deposited at the cathode where reduction is going to take place so between zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus what is the stronger oxidizing agent because the stronger oxidizing agent is what's going to get deposited at the cathode the stronger oxidizing agent is what's going to get deposited at the cathode. So what do we need to do? We need to go to a predict table and see which one it is between zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus. The question says, why is zinc two, why is zinc not being deposited at the cathode? So obviously we already have our answer, but I'm just trying to show you where it is coming from. Copper 2 plus is a stronger oxidizing agent compared to zinc 2 plus. Let's go to our table so that it can be easy to see. All right. So our table, 
um, standard reduction potential. Okay, let's take a look at, let's use 4A. It doesn't really matter which <laughs> table we use, by the way. So take a look, increasing oxidizing ability as we go down. So let's look for zinc and copper 2 plus. Okay, so where is zinc? Where is copper 2 plus? Uh, this is copper plus. We are not looking for that. We are looking for copper 2 plus. We have copper 2 plus right yeah, no, that is actually not the one you're looking for because we're looking for the one that will accept two electrons to form copper. This is the one we're looking for. This is the copper two plus you're looking for. So be very careful when you're using this table. You just don't uh, find copper and uh, take it as it is. You have to take a look at uh, exactly what you are dealing with. Okay, so we're seeing that. Uh, copper 2 plus is a stronger oxidizing agent so we must find zinc i was starting to get worried a bit here we have a zinc 2 plus but look at my arrow my arrow is going the wrong direction the arrow is supposed to be pointing up as you can clearly see here on our table so clearly copper 2 plus is a stronger oxidizing agent compared to zinc so the answer to 9.5 which is saying I refer to the relative strength of reducing agents to explain why zinc will not be deposited at the cathode. Zinc will not be deposited at the cathode because copper 2 plus is a stronger, it is a stronger oxidizing agent, right? And zinc 2 plus is a stronger uh, reducing agent, therefore. Okay, so that is the reason why it is copper 2 plus that's going to be deposited at the, the um, cathode and the not uh, zinc 2 plus. Okay, that is 9.5. Let's take a look at 9.6. Maybe I need to erase this going to 9.6 so that I can have a bit of space. So let's do that. Uh, back to our diagram and back to 9.6. So 9.6, when the current flows for 30 minutes, 15 grams of copper was deposited at one of the electrodes okay and then 9.6.1 calculate the number of moles of copper deposited well quite an easy equation because we are given the mass so we are really sticking to the basics number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass right and then the mass is 15 grams the molar mass of copper uh, that is 63.5 when you put that in your calculator, you get 0 0.24 moles. Right, it's quite a strange equation, right? Because you're just calculating the number of moles. Um, no trickery whatsoever. Uh, 9.6.1, let's take a look at 9.6.2. Determine the number of moles of electrons that flows through the circuit while 15 grams of copper is deposited. One mole of copper gives us two moles of electrons right it sounds very wrong to say two moles of electrons but you can see the relationship here for one copper atom we have two electrons so if we're saying that the number of moles of copper well we're saying copper is two electrons if we're saying it is 0 0.24 then that of electrons should then be 0 0.48 moles so there we go that is question 9